Welcome to Automated Code Analysis in SharePoint using SPCAF. My name is Tobias, and in this training I'll discuss what code quality in SharePoint could mean and how we can use SPCAF to help us manage the quality in our SharePoint and Office 365 solutions and apps. Enjoy! Part 1. Code Quality Basics So, what is code quality? Well, first of all, we've got reliability and it's utmost important to make sure that our solutions are reliable in the sense that it minimizes downtime and errors that can affect the users. This is obvious. Are you developing your solutions in-house or are you purchasing from a third party? Uh, are you deploying solutions without assuring the quality of the code, which unfortunately is quite common? Uh, and if you do not check the quality of the code before you deploy into production, how do you make sure that the solution is fit for production and doesn't cause any problems? There is the stability, uh, and what is the risk that you will encounter a system critical failure in your application due to poor coding practices? Do you know what potential pitfalls exist in your solutions? Are the developers following best practices and any corporate guidelines that may exist, and how do you enforce this? If you are not sure, what measures have you taken to make sure it is of proper quality before you release it? There is efficiency. How well does your code operate in heavy traffic? Are you losing performance if the user load gets too big? If there is any chance that your code contains a memory leak in some place and the user load increases, it might lead to environment suffering or in the worst case uh, become unresponsive. Before any solution is deployed into production, it should always be properly tested for scaled performance. Unfortunately, custom solutions can oftentimes be a bottleneck in a SharePoint environment due to poor code efficiency and foremost due to very common problems with memory leaks and other things. And you have maintainability. Uh, essentially, less bugs, less redeployments. So code and system maintainability is imperative for any successful long-running SharePoint project. Can you easily make changes, fixes and upgrades to your code base and have it redeployed without impacting the existing deployments? And of course, have you assessed the projects and solutions for future upgrades or compliancy with the app model in SharePoint? If you're on-prem using Farm Solutions, how do you know that it actually works in the next version of SharePoint or in the cloud? If you're ever considering a move to the Office 365 cloud or you want a transition into the app model, what roadblocks do you have? Just remember, it's a lot easier to implement proper code quality checks early in the project rather than it is to do it in hindsight. So why enforce code quality checks? Well, first of all, it reduces the effort. Automatically analyzing and finding coding issues continually instead of when testing starts will help you a lot. Code quality checks and rules can reduce the effort we put into development and testing. And if we analyze the code during development or through our ALM process, the code will be in a much better shape from start. Transitioning is made a lot easier. Making sure your code is properly designed and can be upgraded or migrated into the app model, for example, makes it a lot easier to make decisions regarding implementations in your project. Also make sure that your code can be migrated to another SharePoint installation easily. I'm specifically thinking about the Office 365 and hosted environments here. You have best practices. Make sure that you play by the rules of best practices following the public guidelines from Microsoft and the community. Developers need to be playing by the same rules, and this means that by enforcing certain code quality rules, we can control the produced outcome as well. Most corporations follow various guidelines and policies. By enforcing certain code quality rules, we can make sure that the developers in our projects deliver according to those rules. For example, feature names must start with the company name or that all web parts need to follow a certain naming convention and so on. And again, I want to point that this is difficult to add in hindsight. Make sure to implement proper quality checks as early as you can in every project in order to avoid the added time and effort required to refactor code in hindsight. So who cares about code quality? Well, the administrators care about it because they want to ensure that their farms aren't negatively affected by the deployment of a new solution. Developers need to know that their code complies with modern coding practices and that it's future-proof. They also need to make sure that the code is of proper quality and doesn't break any critical rules that may compromise a system where it's deployed. Your architects are responsible for the overall solution architecture and they want to ensure that the codebase is well designed and maintainable. 
it is also very important to see what parts of the code that can be upgraded and potentially migrated to the cloud and see if there's any roadblocks. Project managers want to ensure that the project is going in the right direction and that we deliver within the monetary budget and of course within the deadlines we have. If any issues are identified early in the project, it will be easier for the project managers to cope with any changes or bug fixes in the planning. And you have the quality managers, and they need to make sure that the solutions comply with the corporate policies set forth in the organization. Same thing applies for these guys. If you can continually review and assure the code meets the required guidelines and standards, you've saved a lot of time and efforts for everyone in hindsight. I guess you've heard things like, we're experiencing poor performance after we install a custom solution. And this is a really common scenario where you have issues with memory leaks or queries without a row limit or too big list views and so on. Maybe you've heard that we're over budget because we ran into some unanticipated problems that we didn't catch until it was too late in the process. And testing the declarative code is really difficult. SharePoint development is a special type of development, at least traditionally. Much of the code that exists today is unfortunately in XML. Fields, content types, features, feature stapling, custom actions and so on. Visual Studio doesn't offer any tool to validate these files out of the box and as such it's a pretty hard to identify and validate the quality of them without external tools. I think every single developer I've talked to at some point bumped into the problem of copy pasting some markup they wrote but forgot to change the unique ID, static name of a field or another identifier that needs to be unique. Given the lack of validation from Visual Studio when you design these things, it can be easy to miss and not be brought to light until you've deployed to test or even production environments. Another example is localization of files that you can sometimes miss out on completely. What if you're targeting a multilingual deployment with several languages and your solution needs to comply with localization standards? Adding localization to the XML files is a particular common thing to forget which, just as with other things, could be avoided if we found the problem before leaving the developer environments. So, what's in a SharePoint solution or an app? There's many types of artifacts in an app or a solution, and they can all behave differently. If we can understand the contents of our solutions, we can determine if it's a risk for our system stability. Analyzing the results of these artifacts can be crucial in planning your upgrades or migrations for the future development. So we have assemblies, which is your compiled code, which could be your assemblies and also executable files uh, for Windows applications or console applications for SharePoint, uh, utilizing, for example, the server-side object model or the client-side object model. It could be XML files like schema files, list templates, content types, custom actions, the manifest files, and so on. It could be user controls and pages containing a lot of backend logic for custom interfaces. It could be CSS style sheets, JavaScript files, and so on. It could be resource files, images being deployed to the SharePoint root folder, various artifacts in the SharePoint root and layers folder, and a lot, lot more. It can be a hard job to keep track of all the artifacts inside of a solution, and on top of that, keeping it organized. So, what traditional tools exist? For code analysis in general, some of the more popular alternatives are fxcop and cat.net which can analyze your code practices, give you a good metric overview, and the cat.net tool can analyze the code security in .net. However, none of these tools or alternatives have any support for the object models in SharePoint or Office 365. The same thing applies for StyleCop. It can analyze your coding style and compare it to configured guidelines, but it does not cover SharePoint or Office 365 object models. SP Dispose Check and MSO CAF tools are SharePoint specific, but there's no support for SharePoint 2013 in SP Dispose Check, and there's a limited support for previous versions of SharePoint. So the SP Dispose Check tool, for example, does not work with SharePoint 2013, and it will only report zero errors every time you run it. So this tool is totally deprecated if you're working with 2013 or, or later. Also, the MSO CAF tool hasn't been updated for a very long time, and it's only for SharePoint Online, uh, and it has a limited coverage of what it can actually analyze in SharePoint Online. So, in general, with most popular tools for developers, there's no SharePoint support for performing code analysis if you're working with SharePoint 2013 and forward. Uh, and this is, of course, where the SPCAF toolset comes in. What was missing from the tools? 
In the previous list, we saw some tools available for various types of code analysis, but none that is really diving deep into SharePoint solutions and app models. So in the traditional sense of tools, there's a lot of capabilities that are missing from a SharePoint and Office 365 perspective. We were missing a SharePoint and Office 365 compliant code assessment tool, a proper dependency analyzer to see how our solutions and artifacts are dependent on one another, a metrics collector for SharePoint solution and add-ins, which can collect proper code metrics for all types of SharePoint artifacts, including metrics on number of features, number of content types, lines of code per language, number of security related components, and so on. An automated documentation of the solution and apps we are building from a development and implementation perspective. If you can automate that process, you're saving a lot of time. And we were also missing a good way to perform a migration assessments if we want to move from full trust code to the app model, or if you want to move from SharePoint on-prem to Office 365. This is particularly common if you are moving from SharePoint on-prem to SharePoint in the cloud, for example, with Office 365. And that's what the rest of this training is going to be about, SPCAF or the SharePoint code analysis framework and how to use it. So tag along in part two and we'll start investigating what SPCAF is and how to get started with it.